Hey there, Brewberries, what's up, and welcome to another episode of the Hardcore Minecraft. We're back today, and we are going to be doing some building. Got some quick things to run you through, but firstly, check out that new intro. How do you like it? Do you like it? I like it. I think it's good. I am biased because I created it, but... I think it's a really good thing. So yes, new intro and stuff. We're going to be discussing it today in a time lapse. So don't you worry. I've got you covered if you're interested in the background of that. Firstly, I did want to say though, new intro. How do you like me calling you Brewberries? Do you like it or no? I've been trying to think of a name to address you guys instead of saying the typical, hey there, what's up and welcome, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm trying to refer to you guys a little bit more inclusively as a collective versus just saying, you know, hey there and and guys and yeah. Um, so I came up with Brewberries a while, little while ago and I just thought it was a punny name to call you guys. Um, but if you guys have any names that you think would be funny that play off of Pixel or Brew or Pixel Brew or coffee or tea, not alcohol though. Um, I'm just not really trying to associate myself with alcohol because I feel like that just could get flagged for some reason on YouTube. So just keep it to coffee and tea because I like both of them and that's definitely more me than anything. Um, so yeah, if you have any names that you would like to put into submission for potentially me referring to you guys as, leave them down in the comments below because I think yeah, I wanted to open it up. I opened it up to Discord a little bit um, and mentioned the brewberry aspect. They all like the brewberry aspect, but I wanted to kind of throw it out there for all of you here on YouTube um, for the you know broader audience and all that. Um, definitely leave your suggestions down below. I am open to it. Now today, what are we going to be doing? Well, you see some markers here and uh, no aqueduct. So the reason why I tore all of the aqueduct down um, is because I've just done more planning on it and uh, the previous one was more of testing a theory and it ended up being correct um, on the villager transport stuff and I've got an even better system for it, so that's good. Also this, yeah, so a creeper. I've been mining and I've uh, been trying to repair Silk Vester Stallone here and uh, because he's my only mending pickaxe. Uh, and then I gave up on trying to do that. And now I'm just trying to collect levels to be able to put a new pickaxe into the anvil over there and to then repair him that way because I need 17 levels. And so I've just been kind of chilling, killing mobs and stuff. And that's why all our dogs are right here because they are helping me kill all these mobs. Um, but a creeper, I was honestly like 1v9ing these zombies and skeletons and a creeper decides to creepeth on up to my booty from this direction and tried to blow me up and i kid you not i i legit about urinated myself i almost peed my pants because of how how badly it scared me because it was literally like within milliseconds we literally almost lost this world because of the fact that i was facing this way creeper creepeth on over here and I just heard the th sound and it was like, oh, frick, and then did that. And that was like within milliseconds, the only reason why I was able to actually, you know, survive. So that's a fun fact. I hope hopefully I have the footage, I think, so I, I can try and show that as I'm talking about it. But um, to the aqueduct. So this is how many each one of these is where a leg is going to be because I have a really cool design. Um, but it requires a crap ton of stone and andesite, so I have to mine a lot of that. Um, but it's not too much. I think it's just two double chests of each, and that's kind of a generalization. So probably a little more, maybe a little less, I don't know. But each one of these is going to be a leg that takes it on over, and I am going to be doing what some of you had suggested of taking the water from up over yonder. If you haven't seen last episode, definitely check it out. This will make a lot more sense. Um, I don't feel like going on over there because it's nighttime. I don't want to sleep. I want to get some experience levels and all that. I do like the idea of bringing the water both to the town, kind of dropping it off like over here. I see you, Stott. You're just so anxious so so anxious to kill me but i really love the idea of bringing the water to the town so it's going to drop off to about here's where the town's going to get their water and then you can see that's the kind of the marker it's also where the villagers are going to get dropped off um, because there is a villager breeder up there if you haven't checked out last episode it'll make a lot more sense if you do if you do check that out go on go i'll be here 
this episode's not going anywhere. Um, but then I also like the idea, as I had said, of taking it to the king and the king getting all of the fresh water because there will be a keep castle doohickey thing up on top of the mountain there. Uh, and so I really like the idea of taking it. That's what that marker is. That's how tall it's going to be. Um, and so that's, yeah, just going to be where the water goes. And so it's going to go all the way over there. And each one of these is a leg. Um, so I have a lot of building to do. I only have a couple days here to be getting all the stone and to be doing the building and then doing the editing. So let's go ahead, get on into the time lapse. I need to go kill some zombies and stuff. Hopefully not die in the process because then this episode is all for naught. Alrighty guys, so I have a decent amount to talk to you about today. Um, so we are gonna have a talkie time lapse instead of music and this is probably gonna be the majority of today's uh, episode. Maybe a bit shorter, maybe long because I have a decent amount to talk to you about. But regardless, it's gonna be all in time lapse because of a few things. So firstly, the Pixel Brew brand has been updated for any of you who, I mean, you probably have seen it by now, um, but there is a new logo, new intro, as you saw in the beginning of the episode, and I probably discussed just very briefly at the beginning of the episode. Um, there's going to be a new outro if you make it to the end of the video, and there was a logo reveal trailer that was dropped. Link is in the description, and if I remember, I will try and put a card in the top right now um, in order for you to be able to go over there, take a look-see at it. It's real cheesy, and I spent probably way too much time on it, but I was having a really good time making it, and so I thought it was pretty fun, and I wanted to kind of make it sort of a memorial, I guess, to the previous Pixel Brew logos and brand-oriented stuff. Um, because we are kind of retiring out the old and bringing in this new, um, which I think is far better than anything we've really had before. And it's more consistent and more, much more me. But we'll get into this all kind of the discussion of it a little bit later. Um, but yeah, link is in the description for that. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I mean, the video is le literally less than two minutes. Definitely go check it out, leave it a like and all that jazz. But because of this whole brand update sort of stuff, that has been pretty much my entire weekend. Um, and so I'm a bit more pressed for time than usual for videos. Now, when am I not pressed for time? Cause let's uh, just take a look at my history of being on time for videos. It's not good, let me tell you. So uh, this week's hardcore is definitely going to be this sort of time lapse type of focused video, and we're going to be building up the aqueduct as as was previously discussed, and we'll see kind of where it goes from there. So let's get into the reasoning behind the brand update, um, because I'm sure some of you may have some some questions or just be curious about why I decided to do it. I'm very excited about it. It's the first time I've really been excited about the Pixel Brew brand. I've always, you know, been excited about the channel and stuff, and I've always loved doing it. But I've never been really that thrilled with the sort of design that we've had. I've tried to update it as best as I can to make it more how I'd like it to be, but I just have never been able to get it quite there until really today, until this, or I guess a couple days ago when all this stuff dropped. I do want to say the old logo will be missed. It definitely is iconic for this channel and I'm not getting rid of any of the files or anything like that. And maybe we'll bring it back for make it like the Bruin build sort of thing. I don't know, but I've always seen that logo, even for, honestly, when I first created it, I've really seen it more as a stepping stone to a new one that I knew I would eventually create. Um, but it was more of a stepping stone until I knew or at least felt confident enough as a designer to retake a look at it. And today, like I, I still, I still not necessarily sure if I did the best job on it, but I think I've done a better job than I have on any of the other logos. The old logo was not exactly what I envisioned for the channel at its creation. Um, honestly, the that very, very first one, if you've seen the logo reveal or you have been here since episode one of Bruin Build, that one is a little bit more like this current one than at least what you may think. Because mentally for me, I can make the jump as to what I was thinking back then to what I have now. Um, and back then I was, this is kind of what I was wanting. I just had no concept of how to express it visually until I learned a bit more as a designer and got more comfortable designing in general. 
And so this new one is much more aligned to what I wanted when I created the channel way back in, I think 2017, 2018 is when I posted videos, but 2017 is when I made the channel. And there's a lot more of me in this new logo. Um, from the isometric style, I love isometric art. I've always thought isometric stuff has been is cool. It's just, I don't know why, but it's just really interesting to me. And I think it's a really cool style to do stuff in. Um, the 8-bit music, you know, I'm not like a huge like arcadey 8-bit type of game person, but I've always been fascinated by 8-bit music. And I've also really just loved video game music in general. That is like the majority of music that I listen to is pretty much straight video game music. Um, and then all the way to the Mario blocks that are dropping into the cup, those kind of symbolize both the pixel aspect, but then also that's kind of like just my childhood. I grew up as a Nintendo kid. Um, we always had Nintendo and then eventually got into Xbox and stuff, but we started as Nintendo and Mario and, and Zelda were like the main games for me for quite a while. And so it's just more me. And so another reason behind why we're updating is because I wanted to expand the channel from being always visually tied to Minecraft because we had the pickaxe in the hand and while you don't necessarily have to directly tie it to Minecraft, it pretty much was always visually tied. In my head, I couldn't not tie it to Minecraft. Um, and I honestly, when I created the channel, I never had the intention to make it strictly for Minecraft content. And while it's always probably gonna be the dominant content on the channel, I want to give myself the room for games that are outside of Minecraft. And it's hard for me, especially as a brand person, it's hard for me to, if your visuals tie in to something, it's really hard to like not be associated with that. So some of you may be wondering like, how long have you been thinking about this? It seems pretty, it's like kind of sudden. I never really mentioned anything about it anyways. And to be honest, I've been thinking about doing this since I pulled the Baroon Build intro song and title, uh, visual title intro. Um, that's really when I started thinking about how, how can we get this type of introduction type of thing back, but in a better and broader format. And so that's kind of what kicked off my re reignited that sort of logo thing. I also for work have been doing a lot of logo design work just because it's the beginning of the year. A lot of our internal teams are, are remade and people want new logos made just to represent their team. And so I'm kind of in a logo phase right now. And so that broader, better format is what I really aimed for with this update. Um, I wanted to create this new intro, this new look as well, that can just be standard pixel brew across all videos so that no matter what you land on, whether it's brew and build, whether it's a server, whether it's whatever, another entire game entirely, you know it's from me and you know it's pixel brew and so you know kind of what to expect and i feel like you got that from the brew build intro because that was pretty much that's like the main thing that's been on the channel for the longest time but for like the hardcore world i feel weird not having it now maybe this is the designer in me that wants to have an intro because i personally love intros i think they're really cool if i spent four days animating the, this new one because one i don't animate for a living so it takes me a long time to do stuff but it was also just really fun to do. Um, and so maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just cuckoo and I like that type of stuff, but because I like that type of stuff, I wanted to have it and I wanted to do it well. And so that's kind of like, that's like the main reasoning for updating. I just, I wanted something that could be utilized more frequently, more consistently across the board on Pixel Brew content. And I wanted the brand to be more visually tied to me as a person, and then also visually tied to what I really feel the Pixel Brew brand is. So those are the main reasons for updating. Um, if you have any questions or comments around it, definitely let me know down below. I love hearing any and all feedback. Um, obviously, if you don't like it and you just wanted to say it, go ahead, but say it nicely. Um, and yeah, I hope you all enjoy the look and feel of it as much as I do. I've definitely had a great time making it um and it's really just it's a lot more me and i think it's, it's a lot more representative of what i feel the channel is all about uh, and so i hope you guys feel that way as well but i think that's gonna that's enough blabbing on my end either we're gonna finish the rest of this time lapse up with whatever the rest of the song in the background is or we are gonna get back in to seeing what this looks like in first person Alrighty, so that took me a little while you want to see something cool 
Oh, a horse stalled. Here we are. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that epic looking? That's pretty insane looking. Oh, it looks so cool, especially up in like actual like first person or I guess we're in third person right now. But look at that. It's so cool looking. Oh, but isn't this just so, so insane? Horsey, you just, you know, stay there. This is pretty freaking cool. I absolutely love it. So we went with a double tiered aqueduct system. Reason for that is because of this layer drops off right here. And that is where the villagers can come to the, uh, you know, the town, I guess. They will get bred up there, and then they'll get kind of just transported along and then dropped in here. Uh, they actually don't fall through there. I've made it so that there is a little drop tunnel that is actually held within this pillar here, so they get pushed off. And, yeah, there is a chance that maybe they'll, like, push forward and land on one of these, but none of the falls are enough to kill them. But the, t the second layer is for the king's water, which is why I decided to go more with this double tiered and also why I thinned it down to being a th uh, three by three instead of the we were going to be going a two by two. Um, I did the three by three because the amount of resources that actually saves is pretty insane. Um, and so, yeah, it's a little difficult to get into um, all the detail work on a four by four and then also not feel like you're dying because you don't have any resources to be able to put towards it. Uh, like, I, there's no way I would have been able to finish this uh, the way I have here. Now, this is not very difficult to build. Honestly, it's really just blocks and the, like stone bricks. And then these are andesite walls that make it so it feels detailed, but it really is not a super super detailed build the most detail is up there if you're wondering what that is so it goes block stair block and then slabs um, taking up the uh, top part of that block and so that makes like a nice little arch goes all the way down and it's so far looking very good so the idea for this water is this is the water for the town uh, townsfolk is this is kind of what they get they get kind of the the almost the like runoff water in a sense and the uh, king gets a direct water feed as well and so it, i don't want the king to be necessarily like a bad person and just keeping all the water for himself um, and so he has made it so that he has a aqueduct that goes straight to the town as well so they get fresh water um, and where did my horse go but if we travel on up through the mountains if i can get up here let me go there we go uh, you can see that a bunch of differing sort of heights and stuff to the pillars but overall it's a pretty standard build style nothing really changes uh this is the tunnel to for the other aqueduct i had to fully cover it because that is where since the villagers are going to be transported there i just opted to just fully cover it instead of trying to do something fancy schmancy with it um, figured nobody else is going to actually see it anyway, so not that big of a deal. Now, I have fully reworked this uh, whole system here as well. So you can see this is uh, where the top aqueduct goes, and we're going to have to do some reworking as well. I'm going to gather some shroom lights and put them on the bottom so this is all fully well lit, uh, and so it should never actually freeze over. Um, and if it still does for some reason, I will try to figure out some method to make it so it doesn't, so we don't also have to have torch spam like we do to melt the ice just an unfortunate thing being in the mountain biome is it does freeze over um, but you know that's not like a huge deal um but as you can see i have modified this to being a single wide and so then they will come through here and then fall down and then this is the big old tunnel and if we can just get on through here there we are we are through the mountain we have some uh, last minute things that we need to do to make this uh, properly work and what we're gonna do is put a little bit of a guard up so that the villagers cannot actually move around and i've realized that i forgot trap doors all right, got trap doors and i also realized i needed to have buttons and uh, the stone pressure plates because what we're going to be doing is decorating this out like so so we're going to put a button 
a pressure plate, a button button, a pressure plate, and a button. And we're gonna do that on either side, and that is going to essentially just mob proof this. And I just want this lower portion. I'm not gonna do it to the top because I don't really care that much about it. Um, and then, so this is now mob proof. Things aren't gonna be able to spawn here and they can't spawn anywhere else. Uh, and so that is, makes it so the villagers can be just perfectly safe. Uh, nothing is gonna really attack them. Even if there was a pillager raid, I think they would kind of wander on through here faster than the pillagers could really aim. They may not even be able to get close enough to actually get a good shot on them. And so we need to do this all the way down. And um, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. And then that is gonna have to do it, I think, for this episode. So let me go ahead, get this all situated, and I'll bring you back in for the very final looks. All right, so this is the final section. Not nearly as many as I thought there were going to be. I've actually forgot how big the mountain was uh, for this build, and so it actually required way less resources than I spent time gathering. So slightly frustrating, but totally my fault for not actually paying attention. Um, so this is what will happen when the villager gets all the way down. They it cannot get through here. And so eventually they'll just kind of go eh, and fall down here and then they can waddle their way on out and be a part of the village. And so I think what I'll do is I'll try and have some either, I, I don't know if I'll do boats or if I'll just get some spare beds kind of wandered around and kind of lead them around with beds because they'll go they'll try and go and claim a bed essentially uh, and so I think because they're far enough away that they won't actually have access to that bed I don't think they're going to be caught up on it they may be I don't know um, but I, if anything, I can go and destroy it. Not that big of a deal, but there is what that looks like. I think it's nice because it adds a little bit of a sort of inner support system. So to continue that sort of wooden theme all the way from, uh, where it kind of sticks out there, decided to stick a little bit of like a little lantern type of thing there. Uh, don't know who's going to be changing that lantern, but I thought it kind of looked nice. It does. It makes it, uh, this come to a nice end, uh, since there is no structure that goes down this way. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily realistic, but I don't really feel like anything's gonna be knocking this thing over. Uh, so unless, I mean, insane winds, I guess, but I would imagine this sort of footing goes pretty deep into the ground as well. Uh, and so I, I played around with doing this architecture, or architecture, this arc thing all the way down and I didn't really like the way it looked considering this was no longer actually going to be continued uh, and I wanted the water to be flowing here so overall I think this is a very very cool build I'm actually really really pleased with it I think it looks super cool and especially from far away like this is like takes up the entirety of the skyline which is actually kind of epic um, one thing uh, this gave me an idea that I wanted to kind of just shoot out there um, a lot of these builds look very dwarfed by this, which they should. Um, but I was kind of thinking maybe what we could do is sort of theme some of the builds more in this stone brick style and kind of make them look ruined almost to where this town maybe this was like an abandoned town or a more th a more thriving city place type of thing. And then for some reason, the people abandoned it and that's why this aqueduct was here and now the villagers that are here are kind of people coming back and repopulating it i thought that could that could be kind of an interesting concept to show like why maybe this is so monumentally huge and uh why the village is maybe feeling kind of more startup-y if anything but oh i like walking underneath it it looks it's Oh, it feels so cool. I've never built an aqueduct quite to this scale before, and I think it just looks absolutely epic, and I'm super, super happy with it. So I think the last thing we need to do is set these people free. Oh my, there are there are many villagers here. Uh, oh, uh, 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 I'm in a bad spot. In a bad spot. Okay, I guess I'm going for a ride with them. And they should be arriving shortly. Hey, there they are. Hey there, guys. Are you, are you stuck? 
do you need out like this? Okay, so maybe we'll we'll have to figure out this again. Maybe we'll change this up a little bit. But very cool, very cool. So much more effective, much safer villager transport that actually works. And there they come the rest. Bada bing, bada boom. We have more villagers and they're gonna look very tribal. Are you gonna try and take my bed, you jerk? I bet you are. But guys, I think that is gonna have to do it for this episode. I just had to turn on shaders to see what it looked like. Very happy I did because this looks super, super epic. And yes, so sorry for the strange episode, um, but due to all the brand update stuff, that just took a lot, took up a lot of time. So I wanted to get this done uh, and at least looking good. Um, and so it just took more time than I was really expecting. I gathered more resources than I really needed to. So we have tons of stone and andesite, which is a good thing. Um, but we need to figure out our experience situation because I am using currently an unenchanted pickaxe because I've gone through three pickaxes <laughs> and uh, I don't want to necessarily lose the ones that have mending. And so that is going to be what we tackle next episode because I have found something that is pretty good for us and it's very close by. But thanks again for watching and I hope and let me know down below about all the things that I mentioned today. Let me know about the brand update stuff. If you like it, if you don't, whatever. Um, be nice about it, of course. And uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.